Hello. Um, today we welcome Shannon Smith to the show. And Shannon started her journey with weight training in 2013, started her own nutrition business in 2016, and has now worked with over 2,000 people. Along the way, she's won multiple um, British junior powerlifting competitions and the World's Strongest Woman competition and helps so many people with the nutrition, training, fitness. Um, but of course, it's just a brief summary and it would lovely to first welcome you, Shannon, to the show. And of course, to hear a little bit more about your own journey in women's health so yeah hello hi thank you for having me on um so yeah I guess I kind of gave it a brief summary there at first but it'll be great just to hear from your side of things perhaps a bit more of an in-depth story a bit about you a bit about how you got involved in this fitness and um, nutrition space yeah sure so um oh it's all frozen Oh, it's gone home now. Um, <laughs> yeah, sure. So I started back in 2012, 2013. I was always into sport growing up. I was on a lot of sport, sports teams from probably about three or four years old. Mm. Um, but from about 14, 15, I started to care more about how I looked and thought that I needed to lose weight. I didn't. I was quite underweight anyway. Um, but I started going to the gym on and off. And I was quite inconsistent with it. Like I wanted to lose more weight. And it was the era of where the whole size zero thing was plastered all over magazines. So as a young teenage girl, I thought, oh, I'm not that size. Like I need to be smaller kind of thing. Um, so I got a bit more consistent with it from probably about 18 years old. Um, I started with bits of running on the treadmill. I did bits of weights machines, but I didn't really know what I was doing. And I was a bit scared to sort of use the men's section in the gym. Um, and I don't really know what changed as such. Like a few people, I got to know a few people in the gym and started training on the like the men's section, as we'd call it at the time. Um, and I realized I enjoyed that more than I did the cardio because the reason why I wasn't consistent with training was I didn't enjoy cardio. Um, but I realized over time that I was getting quite strong with weight training. And my dad and my brother did a bit of weight training at a different gym. We didn't really chat about it much because it wasn't something I was as interested in at the time. But I told him the stuff I'd been doing. And it's like, oh, come train with us one day. Like we're training with some power lifters. Um, be good to sort of like see your technique and help you out a bit more. So it kind of went from there. Um, I had my first session with my dad and my brother and got a lot more into sort of squat, bench, deadlift, the sort of power lifts. Mm. Um, and I wasn't as interested anymore about losing weight or anything like that. Um, I was getting to the stage where it was heading probably towards a bad eating disorder, but the sort of mentality with enjoying the weight training and wanting to fuel my body just helped to change all of that. Mm. Um, so not about a year later or so, I entered my first powerlifting comp. I think I came second in that um, and from there I was pretty much hooked. I did powerlifting for a few years and won the British Junior Championship twice um, mm -hmm. and then I got a little bit bored of powerlifting. I was still enjoying the training of it but it's the same three lifts in every competition um, and a few people were mentioning Strongman to me and there was a gym that was it's about an hour away from me so I'm not very close but <laughs> I started going there um, and doing some bits of Strongman training which I found a lot more fun. And the guy who owned the gym was like, oh, we're doing a competition in six weeks. Why don't you enter it? I thought, well, I've not really done it for that long. There's a lot of the movements and lifts and I don't really know how to do. But I thought, I'll just give it a go for a bit of fun. Um, I really enjoyed the competition. I came third overall, but I didn't realize at the time yeah. I was actually a qualifier for England's Strongest Woman. And <laughs> um, so I qualified for that and I just got stuck into Strong Woman from there. I worked my way up over the years. I was sort of missing the podium in a lot of the national competitions and then in I think it's 2018 or maybe 2019 I hit my first podium and from there I was pretty much never off it and in 2021 I won the world's strongest woman competition oh my gosh congrats yeah that's an amazing journey <laughs> you. like you really worked your way up through all the ranks to kind of get there even like unintentionally as well so that's so so interesting and I know throughout part of that you ended up then setting up your own business as well um how's that kind of worked how's that kind of become part of your journey and yeah helping other people with, in that sense yeah I was always into like nutrition and cooking because mm. it was more of an obsessive thing with wanting to lose weight and then as I got more into weightlifting I started to research more about how to feel my body better yeah. and I started doing various courses to learn a bit more because there's so much mixed information online you don't know what's actually helpful and what isn't um, and then I'd been doing that for a couple of years, just sort of my own nutrition, got into what I felt like was a better shape and mentality with fueling my body well, trying to gain some muscle mass and not actually trying to be skinny anymore. Um, I was posting a lot of like my journey on social media and a few friends were asking me to help them 
theirs so mm. I started helping a few people um, and then a few more people who I didn't really know started asking me so I thought I'll start a little business with it um, I've got the qualifications that I need I'll sort of see how it goes as like a bit of a side yeah. business I was at university at the time so it helps for a bit of extra money but I tended to put the money to learning more and um, enrolling in more courses and things like that and then it pretty much just took off from there. As I got more into powerlifting and did better, I got a lot of the powerlifters who were hiring me. I started strongman, I got more strongmen hiring me. And just from social media in general, it was growing yeah. quite quickly. So it got to a point where, well, when I finished uni, I got a job with a top accountancy firm. My um, degree was in business and finance. I was there for a couple of months and my business was booming. So I was in a position where I was like, I don't really know what to do here. I can't do both. <laughs> I'm more passionate about nutrition and my training and my own business than I yeah. was about accountancy. So I'll I'll give it a go and just quit that and see how I go with my own business. And I'm, I got to the point within a few months where I was working full time with it and it really paid off. Oh my gosh, congrats. That's so, yeah, that's, that's amazing. So yeah, well done on that. And I think it's so interesting, the nutrition part, particularly with, um, like fitness and powerlifting and all those kind of things and how do you kind of find that it's helped you like what kind of tips would you normally give or like wish that you knew sooner in that sense it's made such a difference just knowing how to feel my body like and eating enough protein um what's yeah. a good healthy diet for like well, general diet and like before and after training because previously like a lot of like the whole things with trying to be skinny and lose weight people like avoid carbs avoid fats fats make you fat which obviously isn't the case and avoiding carbs if you're in general isn't ideal but if you're training like you need more carbs than ever yeah and um, so it's that sort of thing where it took me a while to get to grips with that and not think in the mind frame of I almost need to starve my body I need to fuel mm. it and um, but once it the the switch sort of flipped with that and understanding it more my training progressed a lot I got a lot stronger I felt more recovered previously I was I felt tired all the time um but I started to look into more nutrition um deficiencies and vitamin and mineral deficiencies yeah. I realized that I had quite a few just from basically malnourishing my body for a few years yeah. we got to the point where I was focusing more on the micronutrients as well as the macronutrients and just over the years, I gradually learned more, learned how my body responded to certain things. And I could just dial my nutrition in perfectly for myself. Mm. And then helping other people has helped me understand just the human body better. Like I had the knowledge from textbook, but working with someone is completely different because it's all about mind frame as well. And like you can say to someone, oh, you need to eat this, but if they're not enjoying it or they don't want to track the calories mm. or they struggle with certain aspects of cooking certain things and stuff like that, it, it sort of throws you out of whack a little bit and you need to know how to deal with that sort of person and how to help them rather than just being like this is what you should be eating yeah no definitely I think also that's really important what you've touched on there with the whole reframing the attitude to it because I mean as you said there's so much in the media of just being like don't like basically just don't eat and if you want to be so to say like skinny or fit or whatever but I think what you're saying is so important and actually listening to your body and actually nourishing it and I think that's something that yeah so many people would like yeah need to have that coach sometimes just to relearn that relationship with their body and with food yeah I have noticed as well over the past few years well when I got into um powerlifting I think mm. around 2016 2017 wasn't not a bit before then 2014 2015 there wasn't many women in it at all, at all. Mm. I mean over the years it's gradually grown but now it's for, for the past five years it's absolutely a boom where women are wanting to lift weights and wanting to yeah. be stronger and actually feel the bodies rather than wanting to be like the size zero skinny mm. sort of things we were thinking about 10 years ago which is really great to see because everyone's so much healthier I get a lot of female clients coming through me like I want to build muscle mass which yeah. originally they all just wanted to lose weight. No one wanted to build muscle mass. They just wanted to lose more and more weight. But now a lot more people are in a healthier relationship with the body and food and not avoiding certain things. So it's really good to see. No, that's so nice. And I also think people like you have been a big part of that, in inspiring people to actually have people to look up to and be like, oh, I, I want to be as strong as her. I want to be able to come do these things like win strongest woman like you, Gan. So I think that's, yeah, really, really inspirational. And what kind of related to that what kind of um advice would you normally give to someone a, some a, a lady who's come to you and wants to fuel their performance wants to fuel that muscle growth or that high yeah high performance 
if someone's focusing on the training, I would usually want to put them in a slight calorie surplus to start with. Mm -hmm. A lot of people do get scared with that because they sort of think, no, I can't, I'm going to gain weight. Yeah. And they don't want to gain fat, they obviously want to gain muscle. So I'd usually start it quite slow, um, introduce the right foods to make sure they've got a good balanced diet. And then each week we've gradually add a little bit more food. So it's not a shock of adding 500 calories all of a sudden and feeling like you're eating mm -hmm. loads. Um, it works really well doing it quite slowly. And I think it helps a lot of the mind frame, especially the women who tend to have had like eating disorders in the past because yeah. if you give them 100 calories extra they're like oh that's that's not too scary like it's only a bit more and they'll see that they're not really gaining any weight from that or mm -hmm. they'll notice to see like they are gaining muscle mass obviously it will take time yeah. a few months to see your body change but usually people are in the mind frame where they're like oh more calories equals more body fat instantly like i've had people who eat 200 300 calories more in a day and suddenly think they've gained loads of weight but it takes a bit of time for them to realize that's not how it works <laughs> so just generally understanding it all and no, taking the program uh, the process quite slow does work a lot better with most people yeah no that's really good and i think with regards to what they actually eat as well so they kind of go in the surplus and i kind of I mean, my, myself personally, I always think if you want to gain muscle, you've got to eat more protein. But I feel like it's not as simple as that. What kind of tips do you feel that a lot of your clients kind of miss out on? Or, yeah. What... Uh, well, generally, you'll need more calories. But protein is one of the things a lot of people do, do need to focus on. And um, the general rule of thumb tends to be about a gram of protein per pound of body weight. But depending on your body fat percentage, this can be up or down slightly. Um, protein is the thing that most people tend to struggle with because for a lot of people, it, it's not always the food that they enjoy. Like If you like meat, then it's pretty easy to get your protein in. But if you've grown up not really having a high meat diet, it can be quite hard to transition yeah. over, especially if you've been having a lot of like high fat and high fat and high calorie foods. But a lot of people were, I've started to get them to have maybe like add some yogurt to the breakfast or some sort of like protein, mm -hmm. high protein thing or like eggs if they don't want to eat meat. Um, and then into the main meals, if they are a meat, meat eater, gradually increasing the portions of like mm -hmm. lean meat, like mince and chicken and things like that. Um, some people just take time, they won't go from eating, say, 50 grams of protein to 150 in a mm -hmm. few weeks. So it's just gradually building that up and getting them used to it, but still enjoying the foods that they are eating. Mm, yeah, no, that sounds really good. I think that individual nature of it is obviously, yeah, everyone is so different in the way that they kind of respond or like different foods. So I think that's, yeah, definitely really important. Do you find like, I know you work with male and female clients. Do you find like there's a difference between what you would, like a female based diet or a male based diet, like what you would recommend? Or is that, is it kind of similar? Um, it's fairly similar. Obviously, I'll usually go off body weight more than anything. So a heavier yeah. female might be on a similar diet to a light male. But generally, males do have more muscle mass and tend to be a bit heavier and bigger. So they will be on higher calories typically. Okay. But it does depend on dieting history as well, because you might get a male who's not been great with his diet in the past and has quite a low calorie diet. So it will take a while to get his calories up to quite a high amount. Like you think in theory he should be on. Whereas you might have some females who they've not really dieting or restricted in the past and they've come to me and fairly high calories and I've built them even higher so I do have some women who are quite small on higher calories than a man who might be over 100 kilos but it's just where you are in like the stage of your fitness journey and what your goals are as well because if you're dieting obviously your calories will be a bit lower but once you've hit the sort of weight you want to hit we'll, we'll build them back up as well mm, yeah definitely no that's really that's really interesting um and I'd love to also speak a bit about um training and even nutrition with regards to like fertility and pregnancy because I don't know what the kind of interplay is there with about whether you should do certain exercises if you should be if you can still kind of be building muscle what if your nutrition has to train change at all like, I'd love to know a bit more about that yeah, well, this is something I've actually looked into quite a lot of the past year. Uh, me and my partner, well, now husband, got married at the end of last year. So we were Congrats. back on in to try for a baby. And I am currently 15 weeks pregnant. So <laughs> pregnancy, nutrition and training has been like a big focus and something yeah. I've spent a lot of time researching to help clients, well, I've worked with pregnant clients in the past. So I had a good knowledge of it anyway, but to learn more about my own training mm -hmm. myself. Um, and there are a lot of like, if you call them myths out there that you shouldn't lift more than 20 pounds while you're pregnant or you shouldn't eat certain foods and stuff like that but a lot of it there's more recent studies that basically debunk all of that and there's more evidence that suggests it is fine to lift through pregnancy obviously okay. you'll listen to your body and mm. if you've been lifting for a while you'll you'll know what feels right and what doesn't if you knew obviously you wouldn't start 
lifting heavy weights when you're pregnant, you're best off going to some sort of class that aids around pregnancy training or a PT that works with pregnant women. But there isn't really anything that actually affects your fertility or risks, risks the baby's health. A lot of the time it is just a case of not over fatiguing your body and ensuring that you're giving it the right nutrients that you need. Mm -hmm. A lot of these stuff in the media that you hear, like you shouldn't train or you shouldn't lift, it's bad for the baby. It is actually, well, it originated from being pelvic floor issues and causing pelvic um, floor dysfunction or issues with your abdomen. But a lot of people sort of misinterpret it as it, it can cause a miscarriage, which also certain things can, but miscarriages can obviously happen for many different reasons. Mm. But the more recent studies suggest that people who do weight train throughout the pregnancy and are strong have far less pelvic floor issues than they do than women who don't train or have never trained or okay. stopped training for pregnancy. There's quite a few podcasts I've been listening to recently on this that has been really helpful. It sort mm -hmm. of just eases my mind because obviously you hear all the old stuff that people are saying and it still plays on your mind a little yeah, bit. Definitely. Like you want to protect your baby as much as you can and you don't mm -hmm. want to risk it in any way. For myself, I found that I've also reduced the weight slightly in my training because I'm not going to be grinding through any lifts or anything like that. But I plan to compete against once I've had my baby. So mm -hmm. I can't just stop training and know what I want to. And it wouldn't be good for my body to either. Mm -hmm. um, I've just like reduced certain movements or stop doing certain things like in strongman there are some events where something might be against your belly so obviously that type of thing I can't do mm -hmm. um, and I've stopped using a weightlifting belt just because the pressure of pushing against it doesn't feel right as my belly starts to grow so a lot of my weight's been reduced to get used to beltless sort of work and bracing my abdomen and making sure that my pelvic floor and my abdomen are all staying engaged yeah. and it's not going to cause any issues further down the line I do find that I'm a lot more fatigued after training like stuff that I'd used to do I'd get home and I'd feel fine and I'd almost want to train again but obviously <laughs> I need to rest but now I'm to the point where I kind of need to nap when I get back and recovery is taking its toll a bit so as yeah. I get further along I am like this need to reduce things down a little bit more or just generally the amount of training that I do hmm. but usually my sessions are around three hours long so it's quite a lot of work. Oh, wow. It's still quite a big toll on my body. <laughs> it's not quite the same workload as it was previously. I still feel like I recover well enough, but I'm kind of just listening to my body at each stage of it. Mm. I have had bad morning sickness as well, which some days has stopped me. I might be part way through my session and start throwing up. And sometimes I can carry on. Sometimes I have to stop. Oh my gosh, that is dedicated. Kind of just see how it goes on the day. Mm. That's so, in, yeah, I think that's really good. I think that listening to your body part is also so key, isn't it? I think everyone knows what you can feel in you, what's good for you and what works and what doesn't. And if something's making you really tired or something's energizing you, then you can kind of build in more of one thing and build out more of one thing. So that's really good. I guess kind of on that, do you kind of do more pelvic floor strengthening exercises then throughout your pregnancy? A lot of the work that I do will be engaging and using the pelvic floor anyway. And from so yeah. much time lifting, it's not something I need to tend to isolate just because it's built its strength as I've mm. built mine. But as I get further along in pregnancy, or what, mainly once I've had the baby, it will be something where I'll have to sort of isolate the sort of pelvic floor movements and mm. focus on them for a few weeks before I can get back to the heavy lifting, just because obviously my pelvic floor would have taken a bit of a beating giving birth. Mm. Um, and it would take some time for obviously your abdomen muscles will usually separate for them, for them to come back together. So we're kind of looking after my body and seeing how it goes each week. Because I know some lifters who've got back to lifting two weeks after giving birth, whereas oh, others wow. might take two or three months. Mm. So everybody is different and you kind of know how things feel with your own body yeah no I think yeah that's completely right I think also kind of with that how long until you're about to like how far along the pregnancy would you carry on training perhaps say as you say yeah three hours a day or the same yeah high intensity um, well I'd hope to carry on training throughout the full pregnancy in terms of what I can do obviously as I get a bigger bump there'll be more movements that I can't do so I'll have to yeah. swap them out which it might be different exercises that are a bit quicker to get through because sometimes I might just need to cite a longer rest or sometimes yeah. I'm puking makes the session a bit longer yeah. um but it's kind of again it's probably just listening to my body like if I could I'd keep it to the same intensity but with how much fatigue I'm feeling now it's likely that I will have to reduce it as I go along but as I cut out certain movements that I feel like will be unsafe there's I'm limited with what I can actually do so there'll probably yeah. be a smaller workload just generally because 
I'm only capable of doing certain things. Uh, but it will be a bigger focus on like pelvic floor and core work as I get further along or just generally keeping the movements going until I'm ready to start progressing them again once mm-hmm. I've had the baby. But I think keeping myself healthy and not avoid, not stopping the training will actually help in the long run. Because mm-hmm. there are some studies that suggest that people who do stop do have more issues after birth in terms of with um, diastasis recti with her abdomen or pelvic um, floor issues. Definitely. I think, I mean, not that I know much about it at all, but it, it makes sense that, building that strength in the whole body and working together a lot of them are such compound movements I think in strongman where I feel like that whole body strength was it's just always going to be beneficial for like even just carrying the baby and I think you can't really have a weak link in your body when you're trying to that sort of intensity so it'll definitely help because I know some new mums said they struggle with carrying the baby in like a heavy carrier and things like that (laughs) Hopefully that should be an issue for me. <laughs> yeah, no, you're gonna be uh, yeah, you're gonna be smashing that part of it at least. And I kind of um related to that as well. I just have this like image of you um working out with your full like pregnant belly in my head, and it kind of is part of this whole um reinvention of what we kind of you said at the beginning the like say to say um men's area of the gym, which can be quite intimidating and um particularly for women so I'd love to know a bit about how you maybe dealt with like the stereotypes of the gym and like looking like a man what people would kind of say that that would always come when you come with weight training so I'd love to yeah hear a little bit about your experience with that at all yes I was always a bit worried but it was more like people thinking like what's she doing here or is she Mm. like oh she's doing this wrong she don't know what she's doing kind of thing but it kind of like just passed over time as I realized like I know what I'm doing I'm enjoying this I kind of don't care that much what people think but then as I went on and as I got better and I saw other people in the same situation as me I realized that nobody cares like nobody's actually paying attention to what you're doing everyone's focused on their own training yeah you might do something you feel you've done something wrong or something silly honestly nobody in the gym will notice and most people actually do want to help like I've had people come up before and give me guidance when I first started you might get the odd person who comes up and tries to give you guidance that you don't really want or who doesn't really know what they're talking about (laughs) yeah (laughs) there are a few of them in commercial gyms but a lot of the gyms that we're training now are more specialized gyms towards Mm. like weightlifting and strongman and things like that so there is less of it and there is more of a sort of like a family feel to the gym everyone kind of knows everyone everyone helps each other if someone new comes along everyone's really helpful with it so it does feel like it's a far less scary environment when it comes Mm. to that now and again, when I go into a new gym that I've never been in before, I still get the feeling of feeling like a bit strange, but I think it's just being out of my comfort zone. And yeah. I realize like I'm not the person I used to be in. There's no, we, there's no way I should be like sort of feeling worried to be in that situation. And I have a few friends who get real bad anxiety with being in different gyms and stuff, but, and it does take some time to sort of get out of that mind frame with it. But I just tell myself like, no one cares. No one's watching. Like everyone's focused on their own thing. And a lot of people don't know what they're doing anyway. So you're not the only one. <laughs> No, that's such a great message. And I feel like that's something that even just yourself being there in the gym as well. And in that section, I know so many people that would be too afraid to go to like the heavier weight section as they say, see it as the men's section. But I think seeing someone like yourself and increasingly more and more women actually taking that and just not caring, as you said, and just going out into the gym and being like doing what they want to do and working out with the heavier weights and instead of just cardio as you said how you even started your journey I think that's yeah really inspirational so I think that's kind of yeah important and what I was thinking of when I was thinking of you with your pregnant belly in the kind of gym area and lifting probably heavier weights than most men in the gym as well (laughs) while they're heavily pregnant yeah I was gonna say when I first started as well as I got better I was lifting more than some of the men and that was one of the points I realized like it doesn't really matter. Like no one cares. Mm-hmm. No one's looking at you. Well, it might be when you're lifting more than them, but they're the ones who feel a bit more embarrassed. <laughs> yeah, I think if you were next to me, I'd be, uh, I'd be like, oh my gosh, she's so pregnant, and I, I really should get to the gym more. <laughs> <laughs> I do still get like negative comments now, especially with the pregnancy. People be like, oh, is that safe? Like, should you be lifting that? Should you be doing yeah. this? It's like, well, I wouldn't be if, I, if it wasn't mm. safe. Like, 
do you feel like actually think you haven't thought about it especially yeah. with lifting for so long it's not like I'm like oh I'm just gonna carry on my training and see what happens like mm. people obviously put in the effort and research into knowing what they're doing with this but someone's always going to say something about what you're doing no matter what or it what what it is um and I know like what I'm doing feels right for my body so I don't really care that much what people think when it comes to that and there are a lot more women now that I've had babies through sport um, and posted a lot of the journey on like social media so mm-hmm. you see a lot more women with a big pregnant belly is doing heavy weights and yeah. it's good to see because it just sort of confirms it's okay like it's not a risk to the baby as long as you've got obviously a safe pregnancy if you've got complications it's probably a different scenario depending on what yeah. the complications are but if you've got like a normal pregnancy and everything's going well there's no reason not to be carrying on the lifestyle that you used to have mm-hmm. well, the healthy lifestyle that you used to have and carrying on the training No, absolutely. I actually don't think you could have put it much better when you said, well, maybe I've thought about this before if I'm in the gym and pregnant myself. I think it can be quite patronizing when someone's saying it to you. I mean, it comes from a place of well intention, I think, but I think it can be, yeah, to think that you wouldn't have thought about what your impact would be (laughs) when you're obviously heavily pregnant, then I think is a bit ridiculous. Um, But I think that's all so, so interesting. And I would love to maybe just as we kind of come to the end of the episode, maybe think a little bit or if you had anything else that you kind of wanted to say, if anyone listening was just maybe starting on their journey with um, weightlifting or nutrition or performance and things like that, something that you would maybe give them a piece of advice or something you'd, yeah, any, any last thoughts? Uh, my advice would be to enjoy what you do because if you're not enjoying it it's yeah. not going to last like you need to form habits that are healthy but they need to be enjoyable like, there's mm-hmm. no point say starting strong man if you don't actually enjoy lifting like pick another sport it doesn't need to be any sort of weight lifting it could be cycling yeah. and running whatever you actually enjoy a lot of people think oh this person does this she's really healthy she's really good I want to do that but they don't actually enjoy that side of it or they don't enjoy the sort of meals or the tra- Maps or things like that so you just need to find something that you do actually enjoy either a sport that you enjoy or a way of eating well that you enjoy like if some people track the calories some people might have a nutritionist who gives them set meals or some people might just want a meal prep sort of service yeah so it's that sort of thing where it's just generally finding what is enjoyable for you fits your life find that there is longevity in it rather than starting something new going all in completely changing everything you do and just thinking this isn't sustainable and stopping Mm. a month later yeah absolutely I think we we always have that tendency to want to do those fad diets or massive extreme overhauls but I think making those small changes that actually work for you is just so much more sustainable in the future so yeah I couldn't agree more yeah, it definitely needs to be a lifestyle change. Like people said to me now, like, how am I still training like through pregnancy? And it's like, it's just a habit as well. Like I, mm. I just enjoy it. Or it's like, why am I still training if I'm throwing up? It's like, it's just what I do. Like it's, I don't even quite like not training isn't really an option to me. Like, obviously if I'm really ill, I probably won't, but yeah. I'll still go to the gym and see how I feel because it's just what I do. I enjoy it. Mm. You've no your passion. Yeah, yeah. You've like found your passion in it. So the, why would you not go and do that exercise instead of it being a chore? So I think, yeah, there's so many different exercises, classes, ways that you can move. And I think people just got to find the one that's right for them and then, yeah, and build from there. Yeah. Oh, but thank you. That was really, really interesting. Thank you. And I think, yeah, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. <laughs>